In this video, we will be going over required daily maintenance of a spider lift, loading and unloading a spider lift using a trailer, and preparing a spider lift for leveling and operation. This video will be the first step in your training process as a ground person with the goal of familiarizing yourself with the spider lift. For those unfamiliar, a spider lift is a tracked aerial lift effective for tree pruning and rigging, especially for trees with poor structures or defects. It is smaller and more lightweight than bucket trucks and other vehicles, allowing for operation in tighter areas with lower risk of turf impact. Before moving or operating a spider lift, you must perform a pre-trip inspection. You must wear complete and proper PPE while on your pre-trip inspection and while operating the spider lift. First, walk completely around the vehicle, checking for any broken or loose parts and removing any trash or debris. Ensure that all safety decals and warnings are visible and intact. Next, check that all additional equipment and accessories are present and in good working condition. This includes the four outrigger pads, the toolbox, the fall protection harness and lanyard, and the controller. Properly tighten the fuel cap, and check the hydraulic fluid levels, engine oil levels, and coolant levels. If you see any fluid leaks, do not use your hand to stop the leak and let a mechanic know. Make sure that the boom is stowed away correctly, that the basket is securely mounted, that the outriggers are pinned in the transport position, and that the feet are in place and can move freely. Make sure all grease fittings are in place and if needed, grease each fitting to purge with approximately 20 to 40 pumps. The spider lift will need to be greased approximately every 50 hours of operation. Here is a diagram of all the grease points on the spider lift. Next, ensure that the spider lift properly starts up. Set the battery disconnect to on. Turn the key to the ground position Wait for the green light to turn on, ensure the red light is not flashing, and then start the engine. Please note that the oil pressure and voltage lamp will glow red but will turn off once the engine is started. In colder weather, press and hold the glow plug button for 5 to 10 seconds before starting the engine. If the engine sputters and struggles to turn on, turn off the vehicle, turn the key to the ground position, Press and hold the glow plug button for another 5 to 10 seconds, and then start the engine again. If the engine will not turn on at all, ensure that all four emergency stop buttons are pulled out and disengaged. To identify the number of hours used on the spider lift, turn on the basket screen and scroll through the settings until it appears on the display. Check that all trailer connections are present and in good working condition, and that the trailer's lights function properly. Ensure that all tie-down points are tight and secured both to the trailer and to the spider lift and that the tilt deck latch is locked. Then, check around the trailer suspension components for loose lug nuts or deflated tires. If needed, fill the tires up to the proper PSI recommended on the trailer or tire sidewall. Afterwards, report and submit any potential issues on your pre-trip inspection form. You are now ready to transport and operate the spider lift. Your transportation vehicle should follow all over-the-road regulations. While driving on the road, be cautious of making any narrow turns as the spider lift is more susceptible than other machinery to tipping due to its higher center of gravity. While remaining safe, take turns as slowly and as widely as possible and avoid any sudden or jerky movements with the steering wheel. On longer drives, ensure the tie-down points are still tight and secure every hour or when stopping for fuel. Once you arrive and park at the job site, properly cone off the trailer and transportation vehicle and begin unloading the spider lift. Unlatch the tilt deck, unfasten the ratchet straps, and follow the same startup procedure from the pre-trip inspection. Once the vehicle is on, open the panel to the left to access the controls for the spider lift's boom. When using any of the levers, you must be pressing and holding down the white dead man's button, otherwise the levers will not function. Lift the basket about three quarters into the air to avoid scraping it on the trailer or ground when unloading the spider lift using the fifth lever. Next, 
access the controller located at the back of the spider lift. Untangle the cable and for the best visibility, stand about 45 degrees away from the back of the spider lift on either side when controlling the vehicle. On the controller is one of the four emergency stop buttons mentioned earlier along with two black levers that control the two tracks of the spider lift. Pushing the switches towards the black arrows moves the tracks forward, while pushing the switches towards the white arrows moves the tracks backwards. To turn in a particular direction, push one switch of the opposite side slightly faster than the other switch. For example, if you would like to turn the spider lift to the left, push the right switch towards the black arrow slightly further than the left switch. Unload the spider lift from the trailer and stop to make adjustments to the basket's height if necessary. Discuss with your crew leader the designated area to park the spider lift, being cautious of any hazards, obstacles, or change in grade. The basket should be parked as close as possible to the trunk and slightly off-centered to allow movement of the boom. Once the spider lift is parked, pull out the outrigger's pins. Change the outrigger from the transport position to the operate position, and then insert the pin into the adjacent hole to lock the outrigger. You must do this four times for each individual outrigger. Lastly, place all four mats from the basket near the four outriggers, preparing it for the operator to level and operate the spider lift. When driving a spider lift, there are many precautions to take for maximum safety and efficiency. The spider lift is more prone to tipping than other vehicles, especially during changes in grade or in poor traction areas. If you need more traction, use the fifth lever near the back of the spider lift to widen the tracks. Be cautious as this will raise the center of gravity of the spider lift. Avoid making fast movements or sharp turns. At a change in grade, drive the spider lift straight along the hill and not diagonally, keeping the tracks at the same elevation. During an emergency, push in any of the four red emergency stop buttons to turn off the spider lift. If the operator is finished using the spider lift and you are asked to load the spider lift onto the trailer, Use the levers near the back of the vehicle to retract the outriggers, retracting the front outriggers first and then the rear outriggers second. The first and second levers control the front outriggers while the third and fourth levers control the rear outriggers. Once the outriggers are retracted, remove the pin, put the outrigger in the transport position and then insert the pin in the adjacent hole to lock the outriggers in place. Stow away the fall protection harness and lanyard into the toolbox. Retrieve all four mats and place them in the basket. Next, drive the spider lift slowly and carefully back onto the trailer, stopping at the black line indicated on the trailer floor. Do not stand near the edge of the tilt deck when loading anything onto a trailer. Lift the spider lift basket as needed about three quarters into the air to avoid scraping it on the ground or trailer. Afterwards, Bring the tracks all the way in and lower the basket. You may now turn off the spider lift. Set the battery disconnect to off and stow away the controller. Fasten all four ratchet straps at the four tie down points on the spider lift, ensuring an even and secure connection. And lock the tilt deck. Ensure that the trailer's connections to the transportation vehicle are still secured and then lastly, collect all of the cones. You are now ready to transport the spider lift. The next step in your training process is to coordinate a meeting with your crew leader or production manager to receive hands-on experience with the spider lift. <laughs>